next thing I wanted to chat about was really editing and proofreading and cover design. Because once you've written the book, the next key thing are those really three stages before you actually get it into production. So if we talk about those three things specifically, editing, proofreading and cover, I'm going to start with Dan. How did you go about that? Um, well, the first thing is to get everything down on paper. So many years ago when I was young, um, I was told by a science, that I did science thing and I had to build something and I wrote when I was, the write-up was, what did you do? So I wrote, I built a bridge out of spaghetti and cotton, full stop. And so the science teacher said, just write, I don't believe that you did this if that's what your write-up is. So she was very helpful, she said, write every single thing that you would normally say, because how I described it verbally was better. The downside to that is that you can end up with a book full of loads of words that make sense verbally but don't quite flow written. Um, so from the editing point of view, obviously I've used friends, I've used editing software, um, White Smoke I think is one for editing and proofreading, going through and thinking, oh yeah, that doesn't make sense and it picks out big chunks of your text and it helps you to go through and I've got another one, I can't remember the name of the other one, but White Smoke's the better one. And so I've used a whole range of different things for the editing and proofreading. For the cover design, I initially used stock images that Lulu used, uh, still does have available. The trouble with that is you end up with other books that maybe are completely different types of topics that end up with the same images you've got, and the images don't necessarily always match what you want. So since then, I've used a company called dreamstime.com, which offers royalty-free images for a reasonable price. They're very high-quality images, and I'll just buy one of them, and then I'll use PowerPoint 2010, um, unlike an arts program, which I also have uh, available that I used previously. But PowerPoint has so many settings on it nowadays that you can just do everything there. It has much more flexibility around what types of text you can place in there rather than an arts program, which normally has good art, things like Photoshop. They're good for arts, but they're not necessarily so good when it comes to what kind of text you would use, where you want to be putting text, doing the whole lot in one package, not doing an image and then placing text over the image. So I actually do my cover design in um, PowerPoint. And, and, and do you have anybody else help you proof your books? Because I know your, yours are sort of unique, that in yeah, the field of for the, hypnotherapy, for, they're quite uniquely written, aren't they? For proofreading hypnotherapy books, there's a bit of an issue that you intentionally say things wrong when you do hypnosis, and you intentionally form sentences wrong when you do hypnosis. So that means when someone proofreads it, they proofread all the hypnosis out of the book that you've done, <laughs> and you have to go through and correct it all. So there are obviously mistakes there as well, but you really need a hypnotist to do the proofreading so that they understand. Um, an example is that in hypnosis, I would say, be calm instead of become, and as giving an idea to someone of be calm. And so I will write be calm because that's what I, so I've written a script book, which is over there. And in the script book, I'll say be calm because I want the hypnotist to give the message to the client, be calm. So I can't write in the script become because I'll say become and that's not what I want them to say. But a proofreader will go through and remove that and say that I've written the wrong words and I've spelt it all wrong. So, you have to, so I have to actually find hypnotists to go through and proofread my work um, to make sure they take out the mistakes but leave in the correct mistakes. So. Interesting. <laughs> Julian, how did you go about it? Uh, editing was, was like for me. My daughter used to work at Penguin, my oldest daughter, so she decided to edit the book for me and she took out some of the more ludicrous stories, uh, including the romance with a fish, uh, which gets a mention on our, on our, on our website. Um, so that was the editing. The proofreading, the nice thing about ebooks is you can send yourself an ebook and read it on a Kindle. So I'd sit, sit, type something in words, send it to myself, and then sit on the train the next day reading the book as if it was a published ebook. And that's when you really spot. What, well, what's not hanging together, the mistakes, the typos, and all that sort of thing. So I do that constantly over and over again. And there's very few, I think, typos that, that, uh, or mistakes that, that got away with it. As far as the cover, that was a bit different. And I think I'm unique in the Chindy members. I'm the only one who's actually changed the cover of my book. Is this his new cover? That's the new cover. The original cover um, is this one, which is a rather nice picture, I think. 
of a mallard changing into a duck, which, if you've read the book, you'd understand why it's got the cover. But if you're looking for a book and you haven't read this book, you won't have a clue what it is, in which case you might not want to press by. That's, that's um, the full story that is A Mallard Ate My Mother. A Mallard Ate My Mother, yes. Which, I, so I, I, the I only, it well. Yeah, and it, there's a quantum world mention and things like that, but the cover really only, only works when you've read the book. So, having, a te- having already published the book, I took a step back, looked at what else was in my genre that was selling, and why wasn't I? Uh, and the nearest thing was a picture, of, because the book's about commuting, was a picture of some commuters on a train. Well, that's a bit obvious. And it had to mention commuting in the title. So I completely redesigned my cover and came up with the same name, but A Commuter's Tales of Adventure and Misadventure, and that was six weeks ago, and that's made a tremendous difference, just having that in the title. So having you know, giving some really solid thought to what your cover's trying to say, and when people look at that little thumbnail on Amazon or whatever other site they're looking at, is it obvious what this book's going to be about? I think it's really important. So cover's really, really quite key. But I've actually went through that process of changing mine, which is very easy. And it took me about a day. Everything's done by myself. My covers have cost me nothing, which is, might be pretty obvious as well. <laughs> uh, but I've used a product called Paint, which is free. You can download that. And I've done everything in that. It's all been very, very straightforward. And again, just to clarify, if you're using Create Space or Lulu, you can update your cover as many times as you want at no cost. Yeah. And you can also edit and change things as many times as you like at no cost. So in my, in my, in my first book, uh, I wrote about a, a character in this book who's Codger from St. Wilfrid's. I actually paid for a professional proofreader who didn't pick up the fact that St. Wilfrid's was spelt with an I because she wasn't based down in Chichester. And the very first person I gave it to said, oh, did you deliberately change the name of St. Wilfrid's? Said yes. uh, uh, <laughs> so um, as soon as that little print run was done, I simply went into the system, did a word change, changed all the ad- Wilfrids to Wilfreds, well, at no cost. So again, that's one of the benefits of self-publishing, that uh, you can do that with certain ways. Um, who was I on to next? Uh, Jill. Thanks, Chris. Yes. Um, in terms of the editing, I did a lot of the editing myself as I was writing. <coughs> then I got some professional advice at two stages. Once, when I was about two thirds written, I sent it to a company called the Oxford Writers Workshop, um, and they put me in touch with someone who specialises in my genre of biography. And I got a, a critical evaluation, so I got a report back um, that went through my book um, and, and picked up a few sort of typos and things like that, but mostly gave me some really valuable feedback um, about the flow of the book and the things I needed to sort of perhaps tighten up. So that was really worth doing, and that cost me a couple of hundred pounds to do that. Um, then um, I asked Matador to do the copy edit, and the thing that I really like about Matador is they have a lot of different services, and you can choose which of them you decide. Um, to take up. I decided to take up the copy edit option principally because a lot of my book is in conversation and I wanted to make sure that I'd got all the punctuation perfect and also all the formatting when you indent and when you paragraph and all those sorts of things Um, and they did a a super job on that for me again for about £300. Um, In terms of the cover um, I was lucky that the uh, subject of my book is extremely photogenic and loves having this photograph taken. Um, and so one of the assistants in the salon, who's actually a very talented photographer, took um, this photograph, so I didn't have to pay anything for that. Um, and taking Julian's point about making sure that your cover really sells your book, we had five different options for the cover using the same photograph. Um, and what we did was we had the, the opportunity to, we showed it to different clients in the hair salon and basically did some market research and it very quickly became clear that this one was the one that, that people really liked. And even where you put the words and, and how you do the spine and what you put on the back, all those sorts of things are really important to try and get right um, first time if you can. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and just for clarification, I paid a, um, a designer which I found from a, 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 an internet group called Ally, which is the Alliance of Independent Authors. I can talk to you about that again towards the end. Ally, and on Ally they have proofreaders and cover designers which you can uh, connect with and and get them to do the designs for you. I think I paid £90 to have my 
covers designs, just to give you an idea.